Hello, my name is Lewis. Today you will learn how the image menu works. The duplicate command creates a new image which is an exact copy of the current one, with all of its layers, channels, and paths. The GIMP clipboard and the history are not affected. The mode submenu contains commands which let you change the color mode of the image. There are three modes. The RGB command converts your image to RGB mode. Normally, you work in this mode, which is well adapted to the screen. It is possible to convert an RGB image to grayscale or indexed mode, but be careful. Once you have saved the image, you can no longer retrieve the RGB colors, so you should work on a copy of your image. You can use the grayscale command to convert your image to grayscale with 256 levels of gray, from 0, black, to 255, white. The indexed command converts your image to indexed mode. You can assign current color profiles, or convert to, from the preferences settings. The items on the transform submenu transform the image by flipping it, rotating it, or cropping it. You can flip the image, or turn it over like a card, by using the flip horizontally, or flip vertically commands. You can rotate the image 90 clockwise, or counterclockwise, or rotate it to 180 by using the rotation commands on the transform submenu of the image menu. These commands can be used to change between portrait and landscape orientation. They work on the whole image. If you want to rotate the image at a different angle, rotate a selection, or rotate a layer, use the rotate tool. You can also rotate a layer by using the layer transform menu. The guillotine command slices up the current image, based on the image's guides. It cuts the image along each guide, similar to slicing documents, in an office with a guillotine, paper cutter, and creates new images out of the pieces. The canvas is the visible area of the image. By default the size of the canvas coincides with the size of the layers, the Canvas Size command lets you enlarge or reduce the canvas size. You can, if you want, modify the size of the layers. When you enlarge the canvas, you create free space around the contents of the image. When you reduce it, the visible area is cropped, however the layers still extend beyond the canvas border. When you reduce the canvas size, the new canvas appears surrounded by a thin negative border in the preview. The mouse pointer is a moving cross, click, and drag to move the image against this frame. The Fit Canvas to Layers command adapts the canvas size to the size of the largest layer in the image in both width and height. When you create or open an image, the canvas size is defined as the image size, and remains unchanged if you add new layers. If you add a layer larger than the canvas, only the area limited by the canvas will be visible. To show the whole layer, use this command. The Fit Canvas to Selection command adapts the canvas size to the size of the selection, in both width and height. You can use the print size dialog to change the dimensions of a printed image and its resolution. This command does not change the number of pixels in the image and it does not resample the image. The scale image command enlarges or reduces the physical size of the image by changing the number of pixels it contains. 
It changes the size of the contents of the image and resizes the canvas accordingly. It operates on the entire image. If your image has layers of different sizes, making the image smaller could shrink some of them down to nothing, since a layer cannot be less than one pixel wide or high. If this happens, you will be warned before the operation is performed. The Crop to Selection command crops the image to the boundary of the selection by removing any strips at the edges, whose contents are all completely unselected. Areas which are partially selected, for example, by feathering, are not cropped. If the selection has been feathered, cropping is performed on the external limit of the feathered area. If there is no selection for the image, the menu entry is disabled and graved out. The Auto Crop Image command removes the borders from an image. It searches the active layer for the largest possible border area that is all the same color and then crops this area from the image as if you had used the crop tool. The Zealous Crop command crops an image using a single solid color as a guide. It crops the edges, as with the Auto Crop command, but it also crops the areas in the middle of the image which have the same color, at least in principle. The Merge Visible Layers command merges the layers which are visible into a single layer. Visible layers are those which are indicated on the layers dialog with an icon. The Flatten Image command merges all of the layers of the image into a single layer with no alpha channel. After the image is flattened, it has the same appearance it had before. The difference is that all of the image contents are in a single layer without transparency. If there are any areas which are transparent through all of the layers of the original image, the background color is visible. This operation makes significant changes to the structure of the image. It is normally only necessary when you would like to save an image in a format which does not support levels or transparency, an alpha channel. With the Align Visible Layers command, you can very precisely position the visible layers, those marked with the eye icon. This degree of precision is especially useful when you are working on animations, which typically have many small layers. Clicking on a line visible layers displays a dialog which allows you to choose how the layers should be aligned. The new guide command adds a guide to the image. The new guide by percent command adds a guide to the image. The position of the guide is specified as a percentage of the canvas height and width. The new guide dialog by pixels. In this case vertically with position at 50 pixels. The new guides from selection command has four guidelines, one for each of the upper, lower, left and right edges of the current selection. If there is no selection in the current image, no guides are drawn. The remove all guides command removes all guides from the image. Clicking and dragging one or two guides Onto a ruler is a quicker way to remove them. This command is useful if you have positioned several guides. 
The configure grid command lets you set the properties of the grid, which you can display over your image while you are working on it. The GIMP provides only Cartesian grids. You can choose the color of the grid lines and the spacing and offsets from the origin of the image independently for the horizontal and vertical grid lines. You can choose one of five different grid styles. The image properties command opens a window that shows lots of different information for the image.